Good morning. I am in Cranbourne South. Now, this home right there is built by a volume builder. The builder's name is after the number seven. <laughs> anyway, have a look. This is a double story home consisting of brick veneer to the ground floor and lightweight cladding to the upper floor with a tiled roof throughout. It is just under one year old. The homeowner has already acquired a number of reports in which the builder has totally ignored the non-compliant issues to this home. How can this be? All right, let's see what we're dealing with. This is a spacious four-bedroom home with two en-suites, one common bathroom and a beautiful swimming pool. It is a real shame that this builder didn't do a good job. It would have been a nice compliant family home. Let's go to higher grounds. The tiled roof appeared good from far, but far from good. The valley gutters must enter the eaves by 50 mil and have the ends turned down into the eaves gutter. This is the breach of HB 39 2015 clause 5.4. If the tiles are not cut neatly to present a straight line at the ridge, hip, verge or the valley, it is a defect and in breach of clause 6.06 .06 of the Guide to Standards and Tolerances. The valley tiles were installed without any fixings as required by both the National Construction Codes and AS2050 where it clearly states that each tile at the ridge, hip, barge and valley including capping must be fixed by either a galvanized clout self-embedding head screw purpose-made clips or flexible pointing material and also the sarking must enter the eaves gutter by 25 mil as per hb 39 2015 clause 5.6 the roof space suffered from multiple compliance issues. For example, the ductwork had no visible labeling on the flexible duct, which is in breach of AS 4254.1, where it clearly states that the labeling shall be repeated along with the total length of the duct at one meter intervals be legible for the flexible duct service life and have characters at least 10 mil high. The support for the duct work must also be a minimum of 75 mil to prevent the duct from sagging, compression or chafing between the duct and the support hanger. The insulation was also covering all the down lights in which it is in breach of AS3999. However, where it is determined that light fittings are permitted to be covered, the following compliance methods shall be used. Unfortunately, the homeowner has been experiencing bad odors. I could smell non-compliant works to these bathrooms. We have an enclosed shower with a hob and a puddle flange appears to be installed. Let's start a water test to see if this shower hob can contain the water inside the shower area else the water will exit the wet area since the water stops to the door openings are all non-compliant. Let's pressurize our bouncing beddy to block the drain and flood the shower area. I like to use hot water to do this test. This will give me a nice reading when I use my thermal camera to scan for any anomalies. Now we play the waiting game. The hydrostatic pressure of the water will force its way through the porous grout lines of the tiles in which a water table will soon be formed under the tiles. This water table will then try to find a breach 
in the waterproofing inside this hob. If a breach exists, then water will exit the shower area. Hmm. Everything appears dry. Let's flood the other showers. After approximately one hour, I was simply flabbergasted with my findings. The bright yellow colour on the thermal camera is showing the hot water under the tiles. In one location it seems that the water has travelled under the tiles and headed straight to the vanity that is embedded under the tiles. Let's take a closer look. Take notice of the minor discoloration of the grout. It appears to have gone darker in some locations. This is an indication that water under the tiles is being wicked up by the porous grout. The water table has reached the vanity unit. If the vanity is not sealed, it will eventually swell up since it's absorbing the water that is sitting under the tiles. It has begun. The hob appears to have failed to hold the water inside the shower area. The water table appears to have expanded to the wet area and may be about to enter the bedroom since the water stop in the doorway is not installed as per AS3740. This is unbelievable. The thermal camera can clearly see the surface water that has just exited the shower area. Nothing is visible at the opening. Oh my god. The water has exited the wet area. This is in breach of the National Construction Codes Part 2.4.1 Wet Areas, where it clearly states that water must be prevented from penetrating behind fittings and linings or into concealed spaces of sanitary facilities, bathrooms, laundries and the like. The water was evident under the carpet. This is due to the inadequate installation of the water stop. The waterproofing to these wet areas are non-compliant since they are not containing the water within the wet areas and are in breach of multiple clauses within the Australian standards. Unfortunately, all the bathrooms need to be demolished and redone 